pretty much my only job is to introduce the guys and then listen to them, Jay, so thanks. Now I'm pretty much useless. Uh, you guys take it away. Now, it, look, it, JT Miller was right. Like, it's just an incredible Canuck season, yeah. and, and it was fitting that it ended that way with the comeback. It, like, if, they, if they'd have gone out 3 nothing in this game, kind of a dismal effort, but as we were all expecting as watching they come on that push at least they I think they'll sleep well once they get over the pain of losing in the end though what was the difference in your mind for the Edmonton Oilers they committed and accepted the fact that it was going to be a grind and they committed to defending the Oilers had to win games in different ways this postseason and they're still going to have to and you take a look at the way they won games throughout this series against the Vancouver Canucks they had to win games at five on five something they weren't able to do well last year they lived and died by their power play yes their special teams were excellent but the commitment to D getting contributions from players lower in the lineup tonight they get a goal from CC they've gotten goals from Holloway and Yanmark these types of players they blocked a ton of shots tonight where the Edmonton Oilers were different is the fact that defense came before offense and the offense came when they needed it to well you talked about being strong at five on five but in this particular game they needed their kill and that was our TSN t turning point because, Copyright. Uh, honestly, because <laughs> Ryan McLeod high sticks Elias Pettersson and it's a four minute power play and the kill is brilliant because they don't allow any shots on goal. They're in the lanes. They're aggressive. They're connected. They do a terrific job to the point where Connor Brown gets an opportunity with a beautiful breakaway. And Arter Shiloff has to make a great save. So it was a minus one on shots on goal. The goaltender has to make a great save. That was the difference in the game was the penalty kill for the Edmonton Oilers. You know, prior to the game, Vancouver Canucks coach Rick Talk had talked about both clubs having to have somebody step up. And it can't always be the superstars on either side. Maybe it's a role player, a depth guy. In this case, it was offense from defense for the Edmonton Oilers. You know, as Frankie alluded to, I mean, Cody Ceci gets the ball rolling off. Offensively, JT Miller just talked about that push. Well, that push starts with the opening goal of the hockey game relatively early in the second period. And then it continues on. Evan Bouchard, yet another great A performance from the Edmonton Oilers defense. And Brett Kulak gets in on some of the scoring fun with an assist. So four points from the blue line coming on the first three goals that the Oilers scored. I mean, that's what you're talking about when you're talking about making a difference, having an impact, and deciding games. You heard Craig talk about the disappointing playoff performance of Elias Pettersson. Let's hear from the Canucks star. Yeah, I think uh, they came out better than us. They got some goals in second, but I really liked the way we came out in third. We didn't give up. I heard what JT said about um, shows what we're trying to build here. Uh, we played till the last whistle. We're close to tie it, but there's been a lot of talk about the adversity you've gone through. What did this experience mean to you, and how will you think back on it going forward? No, of course, it's a lot of learning points for me, and I'll uh, use it as fuel when I get back to training this summer. And um, yeah, just can't wait to be back in this position again. How tough was it to play the game without Brock? It was tough. I mean, just, just. I mean, his stats and the way he's been playing is, speaks for itself. So to get that when he's been <laughs> great for us all year, it's tough. But um, yeah, that four-minute power play, yeah. just how, how difficult was it to just not really get much going at all? And I know it's been a talking point for a while now. Yeah, I mean, say if we do better there, get a goal, maybe the game ends differently. But yeah. How much pride do you it tough to manufacture? energy just given the loss uh, of Brock I mean, we saw with Colorado a few days ago when they lost found the and sort of came out flat similarly because it looked like once you got one on the board the uh, game tilted pretty significantly yeah I mean we just needed to get some momentum uh, I don't think we got that much puck stuck in their zone um, but once we got the goal we got some juice and we got a second goal and yeah I mean it's our goals were close, um, one goal away or one win away from conference final. So, yeah, just yeah, I truly believe we'll, we'll be back here. What does that third period say about this, this group's mentality? I think it shows a lot what we're trying to build here, well, how we performed all year. Uh, I'm really proud of the guys, how uh, used to buy in all year, and um, very unfortunate ending. Um, so, yeah, it sucks. 
he'll figure it out. And too good a player not yeah. to be able to figure out how to be a great player in the playoffs, and the Canucks should be around for a while here. This was not the defining story of game six or seven. Stuart Skinner didn't win the Oilers either game, but he was solid, and it was one of the stories of the series, the fact that the Oilers have to live their starting goaltender for two games, and then, despite the fact Pickard was pretty good, go back to him. I, the results justify all of the decisions? Absolutely. Uh, bigger point, he didn't lose them mm -hmm. game six and yeah. seven. And that was what was critical for Stuart Skinner, who was their starting goaltender all season long, played close to 60 games, and he, he starts the playoffs. And in round one against the LA Kings, he was really sharp. He had one off game. But outside of that, and then against Vancouver, he hit the ditch. And Chris Knobloch had big decisions to be made because there were games where Edmonton felt that they should have won those games, but they weren't getting the saves at the right time. So you go back to Stuart Skinner in game six and said, this is our guy. We're going to sink or swim with him. Well, he did a terrific job. He just did the job in game six. Game seven, I thought he was rock solid, made big saves at the right time, a couple critical saves. And, yes, it got a little hairy near the end. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty but hairy. They come out with the win, and they're on to the next round. You know, it sounds pretty routine, but there was angst throughout yes. the fan base with both goaltenders. And I think that there was some tough questioning from the media as well. But the coaching staff, they were 100% confident in the goaltending tandem. They looked back at the year at Cal Pickard and Stu Skinner and felt that these guys are okay. And the reason they felt that it was all right to make the decisions that they made and going with Pickard in four and five then back to Stu Skinner is because as much respect as Arter Shelof has earned for the Vancouver Canucks, he's a third string goalie. Mm -hmm. So they're looking at their two guys in Skinner and Pecker and saying, you just have to be as good as that guy. And they were. Ultimately, they were. If I told you before the game McDavid wouldn't get a point, you'd probably think yeah. the Canucks were going to win. But that's another sign of the strength of the Oilers. Let's hear from their captain. Uh, I thought we played 52 great minutes, um, really, really good. And then, uh, you know what, little mistake that's going to happen. And, and um, you know, obviously it gets a little chaotic from there. You know, you can expect that. I knew it was going to be a tight game. I don't think anyone came in here thinking it was going to be some type of cakewalk. Um, it was tight. I thought we did a good job of responding. I thought it was a great time up by Chris to settle everyone down. And from there on out, I thought uh, we played a real solid game. Or rest of the period. It seemed like you guys, even though the things did get a little hairy, kept a, a lot of their chances to the outside. Not many shots, I think just five. Can you describe the way you guys played defensively in that third period to keep them at bay? Yeah, I thought we played really well. You know, obviously the kill steps up with another huge one. Um, they've been great all, all playoffs long. And, um, you know, starts with a the kill there in the middle of the period. And, um, you know, we did a good job of just kind of rolling lines and, you know, killing the clock and keeping them to the outside. And it's going to get interesting eventually. Um, you know, it just is. They're, they're playing for their life. It's going to, they're, they're pushing hard. They're sending everyone um, every time. And um, I thought we did a great job of, you know, bending, but not breaking. Evan Bouchard out there to help save the series in the last minute. And then the offense that he had this series. What can you say about this series he had? Yeah, unbelievable series. Um, unbelievable player, um, just getting better and better as he goes. Um, he's so smart. One of the smartest hockey players I've ever played with. Um, just constantly learning on the go, and, and um, you're starting to see him really come into his own. Uh, everyone knew offensively what he could do. Defensively, he's um, he defends using his brain, um, and and uh, you know he's getting real good at that. And now back to the Western Conference. Canucks coach Rick Tockett. Rick, I'm sure this is uh, tough to take right now. How do you reflect on this game, you know, right in the aftermath here? Yeah, I mean, there's no quit in this team. Obviously, you know, the third period, there's parts of the second. I thought there was no quit. Really proud of the guys. Unreal, you know. Millsy get that shot gets through Z. That's in the net. I mean, you know, that would have whew, that would have been unreal. But uh, yeah, made a huge push there. Really proud. What can you say about the fans and how loud the building got late? Once you yeah, they're those great. Two goals? They're unreal. You know, you chain the guys' names. Like I said, I you know I didn't know much about the fans. They were incredible. Great. They were great. Rick, the end was obviously great to watch from from your end. But uh, take me through the start, especially the first period. And you know, you talked about poise and being able to play with the puck and wanting to possess the puck. It didn't necessarily happen in the first. How much of that was what they did versus what you did? 
Well, it's a great team. I mean, um, it's just early. They executed a little better than us, and we just didn't have the puck enough. We had, I don't know, I mean, a lot of missed shots, and, uh, you know, we, we you know, had a couple of breakers and missed the net. I, I thought our execution was a little off, but the second half, I mean, guys, like I said, I, I, you know, only, the only I go from this game is these guys played really hard at the end. Brock might have been in some of those spots. McCabe was in his spot on that line. Then eventually Phil got that same spot. You know, uh, how tough was it to play without Brock in those well, times? Brock, Dem I mean, you, you know, these are bona fide all-star guys. They're tough. But next man up, that's uh, been our mantra. You know, what are you going to do? Um, already played his for us. I mean, what a, what a playoff for that kid. You know, what about his growth? So there's a lot of positives out of that. During the season, you spent a lot of time with leads. Here in the playoffs, it was the opposite. Did that change who you had to be as a team? Um, no, I, I mean, you know, we, you know, coming back from that national. I mean, like I said, I wasn't surprised. Even with, I knew when we pulled the goalie, we we're going to get something, and we had, you know, that chance at the end. Um, it's a team that doesn't quit. I mean, the guys played their asses off. You did. Again, uh, the shot clock ended up being, I think, 17 or 18. It was a story all playoffs, but there was a lot of attempts. Um, you missed a couple of big chances as well. Was that kind of a part of the story for you again tonight? Yeah, um, I think for the most part, I mean, uh, missing the net a lot and um, getting shots blocked. they, they got to give them the credit. They blocked some shots. Um, you know, Bouchard got a couple. You know, th this series, he got, he's getting his shots through. I think we can be maybe a little bit better blocking shots, but they did a good job. But um, that's where you got to move your feet. You, got, you know, you can't be so fine with your shots. But that's you know, I'm not going to nitpick. I mean, that's for the summer. We'll figure that out. Seven months ago, we sat and did our season preview show, and we collectively failed because we <laughs> we said yeah. consensus was the Canucks were not going to make the playoffs. We weren't alone in that. So, look, it's, it's hard to lose when you're up 3-2 and have a chance to go to the conference final, and that'll sting. But that's a remarkable season. Unbelievable. Resilient group with what they had to go through this season. And, and really, it encapsulated here in this Game 7 because you're missing Brock Besser, and the news came out yesterday. Thatcher Demko, your number one goaltender, who's arguably one of the best goaltenders on the planet. So you look at it overall. What an unbelievable season and something to build on for the Vancouver Canucks. There's, I love the spine of the team. It looks really yeah. good. When, when I see that team, I see a team that got better as the season went on. Like, you go back to the start of the year, shooting percentage was really high. They were giving up a lot of grade-A chances. Their goaltender, Demko, bailed them out. As the shooting percentage came down, they got better defensively as a team, and that really helped propel them through into the playoffs, where a lot of people thought this was going to be the easy pick for an upset. Yeah. They weren't. They beat the Nashville Predators. Editors, and now expectations should be high on this group going forward because they showed what they can do. Well, in my role, it's all about, okay, what happens next, mm -hmm. right? So that's what I'm most intrigued with. You know, you look at some of the things that Patrick Alvin and Jimmy Rutherford did as management in bolstering this team. I mean, the Lindholm trade with the Calgary Flames was a significant transaction. Zadorov bringing in the yeah. big defenseman, again, as another significant piece. So what do they have in store in the offseason? Because now they have a taste you know going to game seven losing game seven on home ice in the second round of the Stanley Cup playoffs it's no joke that's mm -hmm. not it's disappointing yes of course but that's not failure by any stretch but it'll fuel the fire to add and do things maybe a little differently maybe a little bit more aggressively this offseason so we get Edmonton Dallas which used to be a staple late 90s early 2000s they played five years in a row six of seven but haven't met since that run ended in 2000 and three but there's a little history remember 2022 this game and this is <laughs> i don't know this is a rivalry but <laughs> this still makes me laugh that's it <laughs> jamie ben just for no reason yeah uh on zach hyman and eh, knocks his stick down punch to the head so yeah we, we, we're gonna <laughs> get a whole we're gonna see a lot of that yeah we may get up to seven more of the dallas stars and the edmonton oilers jay